Hello everyone, how's it going? Throughout this video, I want to do an introduction to lipids because they're extremely important to biochemistry and one of my favorite topics to talk about. No matter if we're looking at animal cells, plant cells, or bacteria cells, lipids, membranes, vesicles are really important to the biochemistry of a cell. Throughout our time studying lipids, we're gonna realize that they're involved in a lot of different biochemical necessities and functions, everywhere from storage and fuel to structure. And in order to gain a grasp on how lipids play a part in all these functions, we have to talk about the most simplest lipid, the fatty acid. When we look at a fatty acid, there's two main components. There's the carboxylic acid, and then there's the long aliphatic carbon chain. Aliphatic just meaning that there's no cyclic structures and that the carbons just form an open chain. The interesting thing is that the fatty acid can have a completely saturated hydrocarbon chain, or it can be unsaturated with double bonds. When it comes to looking at fatty acids, their properties differ about how long or saturated or unsaturated the fatty acid chain is. And because of this, we have some nomenclature rules to tell us whether or not there's double bonds and where they are, so we can learn more about the properties of a specific fatty acid. For example, that ratio in the beginning, 18 to 1, tells us that there's 18 carbons in the carbon chain and there's one double bond. The delta 9 tells us at which carbon the double bond is located at. The word cis helps us identify what type of double bond it is, so the stereochemistry of the double bond. And the rest is the IUPAC nomenclature of the carboxylic acid. Just taking these two segments of a fatty acid, the carboxylic acid and the long carbon chain, this summarizes, even in the most simplest example, the overall scheme of lipids. They're amphiphiles meaning they have regions that are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So the carboxylic acid region of the fatty acid is hydrophilic. It's polar and water is also polar. But the long carbon chain, that's nonpolar, it's hydrophobic. So in solutions of water, we form structures where the fatty acid hides its carbon chain forming anything from vesicles to membranes and even other structures that we'll talk about later. But most importantly, as we talk about different lipid types, we're going to see that same characteristic happen. We have a polar part and a non-polar part. So we're going to start talking about the different types of lipids that are incorporated in cell membranes. Cell membranes are bilayers that are formed from two sheets of lipids, where the hydrophobic regions are hidden in between the two leaflets, and the hydrophilic or the hydrophilic heads are exposed to solution. This is where you might have heard about one of the most common lipid types in the cell membrane, the phospholipid. Hence why this bilayer is usually called the phospholipid bilayer, used in anything from the cell membranes, as we will even see in membrane of mitochondria and other organelles. As we learn more about different lipid types, such as the phospholipid, we're gonna see that they're just extensions of what we know about fatty acids. For example, a phospholipid, the general structure of a phospholipid, is that it has a glycerol 3-phosphate backbone, and that we have two fatty acid chains connected to the glycerol through that ester bonding. And through possible phosphodiester bonds, we can have different head groups, which can affect different properties of phospholipids. Just to further make the connection, if we had a glycerol molecule, but we had three fatty acids connected to it, we would have triglycerol which is the way fatty acids are stored as fuel. Going back to phospholipids, even though they range in different sizes and properties, we have a general average or what's most common in our phospholipids. Since we have two fatty acids, the first one is the one that's further away from the phosphate, is usually 16 to 18 carbons, and it's usually saturated. Whereas the second one is 18 or 20 and unsaturated. This is just based off an average of phospholipids that we find in the cell membrane. 
it comes to analyzing the different head groups that are on the phospholipids, they definitely range in size and properties. For example, this one is a ethylamine head group, which has that 2 carbon chain and the NH3 at the end that's charged. Anything from the different head groups to the different lengths, unsaturation and saturation of the fatty acids on the phospholipid can change their rigidity and fluidity within the membrane. For example, unsaturated fatty acids have a kink because of that double bond, which make the membrane more fluid, versus a greater increase of saturated phospholipids make the membrane more rigid. The more rigid a certain membrane is, the higher the melting point. The more fluid it is, the lower it is. And this is because even though the carbon chains of these lipids are non-polar, they still interact with one another based off London dispersion forces. And what we know of London dispersion forces is that the longer the surface area in which these carbons can interact, in this case, the stronger the bond which impacts a higher melting temperature. Even though phospholipids is what we commonly know when we talk about the different lipids within the cell membrane, there's many different types. For example, there's also sphingolipids. Sphingolipids are a type of lipid that contain a sphingonide base backbone. That base is just 2-amino-1,3-diol, but that is the polar head of the specific lipid. Now there's different variations, we can attach a fatty acid and form different forms of sphingolipids, but they're really important. For example, sphingomyelin is really important to the myelin chiefs of nerve cells. We also have glycolipids, which is the polar head of these lipids are sugars, such as glucose and other types. The interesting thing is that learning about all these different lipids is really important to biochemistry because in certain situations, concentration changes of specific lipid types can impact the biochemistry of the cell. And in future videos, we're going to talk about how these different lipids can impact signaling and other really truly important biochemistry reactions. Also, we're going to learn about the different protein complexes that are found within these membranes, how they interact and what they do for the health of the cell. So I hope this video was helpful in your studies for biochemistry or biology. And I just want you to remember that all these graphics that you see me use throughout this video, I made for you guys. And they're for free digital download over on my website. And I wish you guys the best. See ya.